Hi, welcome to this video where I will be cleaning and restoring this long, ca long case dial. And I've had a good look at it and the name on it is Slater of Stain in Sussex. Now you'll see it's had quite a bit of damage, the dial feet were loose so they've had to be stabilised and so we've lost some more paint here, paint chips to the corners and the whole dial is filthy. Now on the um, cornucopias in the corners here with the fruit, this is gold leaf here and I'm going to avoid cleaning that because it just takes the gold leaf off and it just makes more work. Now as with anything like this, it will look worse before it looks better because you can't do anything until it's cleaned. And so cleaning is the first process. And what I'm using is warm water with a tiny bit of household ammonia. So I'm going to put this on the dial and clean off the dirt before we do anything else. You can see it coming off here. grunge off the surface. That's about all I can do with the ammonia at the moment. Stage two coming. Now, I've started cleaning the dial, I realised on the next stage, and I realised I hadn't been filming, so here I am again. Right, this time I'm going to use a little bit of Brasso just to get the white up nice and clean. See there. You have to really, really rub every bit of it off. Okay. And again, beware, do not get it on the old leaf. Right, you can see the difference as it's coming up. This is going to take quite a long time to do, so I won't bore you with me cleaning the rest of it. I'll just get on with it and come back to you in a moment. Right, so the dial's been cleaned. This dial is never going to look brand new, and I don't want it to, but it's clean. And you'll see where the hands had rubbed the black on the numerals. That's all cleaned off. Now, obviously, when you do this kind of work, it takes off more of the black work. So you have to be aware that that's going to happen. Now, what I'm going to need to do 
is clean out these areas so that my filler sticks. So I'm going to do that with a little piece of very fine wet and dry. Okay, I've cleaned out the areas there and removed any loose flaky paint. There's no point in having that in there. And these areas here. Where you've got very small areas, it's not worth trying to fill because that will just fall out again. So we'll fill that with paint. And also you may find that this over time will fall out because obviously this edge is a bit uh, prone to damage. Right, what we're going to do is we are going to fill it with car body filler. And I use credit cards and old um, store cards as my little scraper. And I don't want it to set too rapidly. So I'm going to mix up some on here with a little tiny bit of... Uh, catalyst I mean you can use all sorts of types of filler whatever whatever you prefer but this dries nice and hard obviously so Now, because the holes are quite deep, you might find you have to do two layers. And also, you'll always have problems where it's um, deformed here because it's been, um, the dial feet have been um, fixed. Okay, so that is going to dry. Um, if I need to add another layer, I will. And then I'll be sanding it down and then obviously we'll have to colour match it in with the dial. Right, so here I am back again and this time we're in a closer up view because I'm not showing the whole of the dial all the time. Now the filler is dried and I've wet and dry sanded it just to get um, the, the surface smooth. Now I've experimented with all types of things to paint dials with and I've used uh, car spray paints and all sorts of acrylics and what I would say is I don't like using things like Humbrol enamels because after a couple of years they go very brittle and they crack off. So what I'm going to use is 
artist soil paints and so <clears throat> I'm going to mix some mixing white I want a little bit of raw umber I want a little bit of burnt umber I'd like some Payne's Grey but I'm not sure if I've got any I'll have a look some cadmium yellow here, a bit bright, let's see if I can find any, um... not good, I use a tiny tiny bit of lamp black I mean every dial is a different colour and the original paint on the dial was paint people call them enamelled dials but it isn't enamelled but what it was was it was heat treated a bit like we call stove enamel now oh yeah and yellow ochre I need yellow ochre right so oops what I need to do is mix up something that remotely resembles this colour. So I start with the white, a little bit of the yellow ochre, colour it down, because we've got to get rid of that white in effect. You've really got to play about with the colours and you've got to you've got to have some idea of colour matching. Okay. Otherwise you won't get very far. So we put a bit on and we have a look. We see what we think. That's not bad actually. Put the first on and then I'll tone the colour in more. Need a little bit of green. Too much orange in that one. But what I am going to do while while I'm here is I'm just going to touch up the corner paintings. So let's get my brush. Just some rose madder just to touch in the little um, roses. Find a 
brush needed. A little bit of rose madder, a little bit of white mixed in white. And a little bit of yellow because the roses have gone quite orange over time. So I've mixed some rose madder, a little bit of yellow and some white. <clears throat> and I will just touch these in. I don't want the white that I add to be too white, otherwise it will look new. So there's a bit of burnt umber in with the, the white just going around the apples and things. Turn your green into the green you require. Too vivid. The blue is the strongest colour and lasts the longest, as anyone who's ever had to paint over a blue wall knows. So I'm not too worried about the blue. I'm not going to bother with that. I don't want to make this look new. It's still got to look authentic. Um, when, we've carry, when we carry on with the dial, we'll have to add in some of the black work, etc. that's missing on those corners, but that will come as part of the rest of the dial. So I'm just going to leave that for a while and uh, talk to you again soon. Of course, um, where I'm repairing the holes is going to take uh, days and days to do. I thought I'll get on with some of the black work. And I'm going to start with the strike silent in the arch here. Now what I'll need is something, a block of wood underneath there. Now I've looked when you hold these up to the light you can see where the original marks were and I can see those with no problems so that's going to be good I can uh, go forward with that I'm just going to prop the other end of the dial up a bit as well because obviously I'm doing this at a bit of an angle right I need to start <clears throat> where I've polished the dial um, I now need to make absolutely sure there is nothing on the dial, no cleaners, no um, <clears throat> brasso, no nothing. So I'm going to clean this 
very carefully and quite well carefully quite hard actually with distilled water because I'm using shellac ink Winsor and Newton's shellac ink don't use calligraphy ink that's rubbish you need the shellac otherwise it doesn't dry waterproof but unless this has absolutely got nothing on it the ink won't stick and also you need to use distilled or deionized water because the ink will split with ordinary tap water so I still need to prop the other end up a bit more let's find something to prop let's see how's that that's a bit better right so I hope you can see this now what I use are refillable technical pens so Rotring or Statler these are very hard to come by now I, I don't think people use them anymore so um, a lot of the time you end up having to buy second hand and the only way you can uh, really clean pens them. I'm using Winsor & Newton um, shellac ink it has to be the shellac you know it because it has a spider on the label and I've cleaned this with um, distilled water so what I'm going to do first before I do the circle and I'm using um, a 0 0.50 pen for the circle we need to get the lettering uh, redone and what I'm using for this is a very fine pen so I have a bit of paper at the ready to make sure it works yes it does and this is a 0 0.18 so If you're not good at going round curves, and this is particularly good for numbers, is get a template. And then you can match up any curves you need, particularly if they are very worn on a particular dial. You can match them up like that and use, use your template for the curves. Uh, so. like that okay so that looks pretty good happy with that now we've got to do the outer ring so prop my dial back up And then we go for it.
Okay, and leave that to dry. I would always advocate working from the middle of a dial out because if you start here and it's not dry and then you start working here, you can come a cropper. So what I will do is work that piece first, then the name, then that piece. Okay, so. My block of wood needs moving to there. And again, I've got to clean that very carefully. Well, carefully to avoid where I'm still working on the, the um, uh, dodgy parts. And again, work on the numbers first and then the outer ring. And again, if you've got problems, use a stencil or a template. They get little bits of paint and oh, dirt in them. So you've got to be constantly freeing up the nib, especially on the very, very, very small pens. Large bow compass, obviously for the large circles, small compass for the small circles. And these have got a screw attachment that I can screw the pens into. So, um, name and luckily it's it's fairly clear on on this dial so I'm quite pleased about that I can see where to go over it right so for the name I'm using a 0.25 pen okay
update you on the progress a bit what i've done is i've done the name in and i've done uh the date dial same as the second style and now i'm just starting on this section now i'm still working on the areas where i'm filling and um whatever so i can only do so much but uh, we'll get on with it and uh, start doing some of the black work so I'm going to start with the actual Roman numerals and work work out. Oh, outwards. Oh, sorry, lost the wrong, lost the right pen. <laughs> okay. Luckily this dial's not too too bad. So I'm just doing all the straight lines at the moment. And um, on a hand painted dial, oh, excuse me, muck that up a bit. On a hand painted dial, they have serifs on the edges. But on a printed dial, they wouldn't have had serifs, so. Uh, that doesn't need doing, that doesn't need doing. I only do them the minimum so that it doesn't look over restored. Well, that's what the client asked for on this one. He just wanted it tidied up. can't do. I might be able to do the very edge of this one, let's see. 